Jai Hind, welcome to class of satellite and radar system. This is unit 4, part 3. And we continue talking about radar system in today's lecture as well. So these are the contents of my slide. We'll be talking about continuous wave radar, few applications of continuous wave radar. Then we'll be talking about frequency modulated continuous wave radar, the noise in a radar system, and what are the system uh, losses which are associated with radar communication. So first of all, what is a CW radar? We know what is radar, right? Radar is an acronym used for radio detection and ranging, right? That is for detection of, an, uh, of a stable element or a moving target and ranging, which is the distance of the target from the source. So uh, uh, we do, uh, in our previous lecture, we have studied about what are the various kinds of radar. Right, uh, the classification we have undergone. We have primary radar and secondary radar. Uh, the prime, uh, like act, which are my active and passive kind of radar. Then we have classified it as pulse modulated uh, pulse radar and continuous wave radar. In pulse radar, the signal, electromagnetic signal, which was transmitted, was high frequency train of pulse. Whereas in case of CW radar, that is continuous wave radar, we do transmit continuous sinusoid wave. And this kind of radar, it operates with continuous signal for detecting non-stationary targets, right? This is used, usually used for non-stationary targets, right? So it must be using some uh, uh, phenomena like Doppler shift uh, for the detection. It is called continuous wave radar or simply CW radar. This radar requests two antennas, right? One for transmission and another specifically for reception. So this is the block diagram of my radar system. This uh, consists of my complete block diagram consisting of my transmitter as well as my receiver part. If I talk about the transmitter part, the transmitter part must be having a transmitting antenna. Usually in radar communication, the transmitting antenna that we used, those are parabolic in nature. So my continuous wave transmitter is associated with a, a parabolic reflector. One of the input goes to my mixer one. My mixer one is a kind of product modulator to which two inputs are applied. That is the wave which is generated to be transmitted and frequency of it is usually written as FO. And a frequency which is locally generated with the help of a local oscillator, right? So this local oscillator frequency is represented by FL, right? Uh, these denotations we'll be using further, so I'm writing it here, right? So my mixer or my product modulator is capable of generating different frequency um, as of received, right? If it is capable of uh, generating FO plus FL, it is capable of generating FO minus FL, then depending on the filters that we use, we prefer to choose the frequency as per the requirement, right? Here, we are gonna use one more set of mixer, which is the product modulator, to which one of the frequency will be either the sum frequency or the difference frequency, and another frequency to this product modulator will be the received frequency. Here, when my radar will be acting in reception mode, right? Although uh, in few radars, uh, uh, in, in most of my pulse uh, radar, we do have single uh, transmitting and receiving unit that is associated with a duplexer which acts as a switch. So in that, uh, my switch will enable my antenna to act as transmitting antenna at times or to act as receiving antenna at other times. Here, I am separating these two antennas. This helps me in many ways. Here, the receiving antenna could also be a kind of parabolic reflector, or that depends, it could be a dipole antenna, right? So here, one of the input will be the received signal, which will be the eco signal, right? 
from the transmitter when it is transmitted. When the signal is transmitted, uh, it strikes my target and the echo signal is received back and is received by my receiving antenna. It goes to the mixer that is the product modulator. So one of the information that we already have is from the transmitted wave. So the transmitted signal, we have it as a reference signal, right? And another signal that we receive, that is the echo signal that we receive back. By analyzing these two signals using the mixer, we uh, here we get different frequency. This I'll show you in the previous uh, in, in the coming slides. So the frequency chosen here will be then amplified because RF frequency will be first down converted into intermediate frequency. Then after demodulation or detection, it is demodulated, right? That is, uh, it, it gets back to the baseband range, baseband frequency. Then with the help of Doppler amplifier and with the help of indicator or display, we get to see the, uh, uh, the target, right? So here, we know as my target was non-stationary target, some Doppler frequencies received here, right? Let's see. If I talk about the CW transmitter, it produces an analog signal having a frequency of FO, right? FO is transmitted, right? The output of continuous wave transmitter is connected to both transmitting antenna and mixer one, right? Now the local oscillator, what is the role of the local oscillator? It produces a signal having a frequency of FL, which I have denoted, right? It produces, uh, the output of the local oscillator is connected to mixer one, true. Now mixer can produce both uh, sum and difference of the frequencies. So I can have either FO plus FL or FO minus FL, right? So what are the two frequencies that will be generated here as the output? FO plus FL and FO minus FL. Right? What is the role of the sideband filter? As the name suggests, sideband filter allows a particular sideband frequency that is either the upper sideband frequencies or lower sideband frequencies. Right? This is my upper sideband frequency, this is my lower sideband frequencies. Depending on the need, we tune our filter to that particular frequency. The sideband uh, filter shown in the previous figure produces only upper sideband frequency that is. So here I get if I consider it passes only the upper sideband frequency this is the output that I give to my mixer 2 right. This is the output which acts as input to my mixer 2 right. Now to mixer 2 uh, it can produce both the sum and difference of the frequency which are applied to, right? One, uh, one frequency is FO plus FL, another frequency FO plus minus FT. FT is the Doppler shift in frequency here because my target was non-stationary. See here, FO was transmitted. This is a moving target. So the echo signal received here will be FO plus minus FD. So these are the two inputs to my mixer 2, right? Now what will be the output? Either the sum of these two or the difference of these two, right? That is FO plus FL plus minus FD or FL plus minus FD. If I talk about the sum, uh, that could be twice. Uh, sorry, this 2 must come here. 2 FO plus FL plus minus FT or this is the sum frequency and this is the difference frequency. So that depends like mixer is capable of, my mixer 2 is capable of generating these two frequencies, right? Now the kind of filter which I choose here which is not shown, 
uh, which is uh, which will be acting as uh, my filter for passing the frequency to IF amplifier that will choose either the sum frequency or the difference frequency right whenever we get to uh, we, we want baseband signal usually we take the difference frequencies right so the IF amplifier amplifies the intermediate frequency the IF amplifier shown in the figure allows only the intermediate frequency see because we are cutting down the frequency lowering down the frequency from IF to RF to baseband So, it is preferable to choose the difference frequency. Now, the detector that is the demodulator, it detects the signal which is having the Doppler frequency FT, right? As the name suggests, Doppler amplifier amplifies the signal which is having Doppler frequency FT. Now, the indicator will be a kind of display device. It indicates the information related to the relative velocity and whether the target is inbound or outbound. Inbound and outbound mean whether it is approaching or it is moving away, right? These two informations are indicated on my indicator. In CW radars, it, they give accurate measurement of relative velocity, which is one of the peculiar characteristic of this kind of radar. As these are used mostly where the information of velocity is very important uh, than the actual range. So we, we don't want where it is. We want at what velocity it is approaching us so that we can calculate at what time it may hit us, right? What are the various applications of CW radar? This is usually used by police speed monitoring. Uh, you might have seen police uh, having a handheld device when a bike or car is approaching. That is used to measure the velocity. And that is how you get chalan, right? Uh, collision avoidance. These are used for collision avoidance. These could, could be incorporated in our cars or vehicles so that we can, we can get a hold of at what speed another object is approaching us, right? And it may give some alert, right? So this is a very useful thing. It is used for control of traffic lights. It can be used as speedometer to replace the conventional tachometer in railways, true. Warning of approaching trains, the same concept. It is used for uh, calculation speed of large ships, velocity of missiles. So it has its application in military as well. So this has, uh, uh, has got its own importance, right? Now let's talk about FMCW radar. This is a kind of uh, radar, which is, uh, you know, a very important kind of uh, CW radar, right? Whenever we talk about continuous wave radar, FMCW radar is the most famous one. When we use frequency modulation technique in my continuous wave radar, that is rather than transmitting the plane sine wave, Usually we know for long distance communication, we do apply modulation, right? The most famous kind of modulation in case of radar techniques when we are using continuous wave uh, radars is my frequency modulation. So in uh, CW Doppler radar, it uses frequency modulation, right? Then that radar is called as so FMCW Doppler radar or simply FMCW radar. That is frequency modulated continuous wave radar or it could be called as frequency modulated continuous wave Doppler radar. It is also called as continuous wave, uh, the same thing I'm repeating. Uh, it measures not only the speed of the target, but also the distance of the target, right? Although a simple CW radar is usually used to calculate the velocity or the relative velocity of the target, Whereas when, when I use uh, frequency modulated continuous wave radar, it can be used for calculation of the distance of the target as well, right? So this is mostly used as radar altimeter in order to measure the exact height while landing the aircraft, right? while landing the aircraft. This is the block diagram of my FMCW radar. As all kind of radar, it has a transmitter part and a receiver part. Here the transmitter part must consist of transmitting antenna. Here the difference we can notice here is we do have an additional modulator block. And what kind of modulation we do use here? it is frequency modulation right so the wave before getting transmitted needs to be frequency modulated right 
same concept what it generates is fo right here the local oscillator generates fl right the two inputs to the mixer one are fo and fl so output from here could be fo plus fl or fo minus fl whereas the receiving antenna will be receiving this frequency so this sideband filter chooses uh, where we should go with fo plus fl upper sideband or lower sideband that is fo minus fl right so one of the input to this mixer 2 is fo plus fl or fo minus fl another input to it is fo plus minus uh, the doppler frequency which uh, with which the target is approaching or maybe going away so let's see uh, block by block we see it it consists of uh, let, let me read out the blocks what it has it has the same if amplifier here another thing we can see here is switched frequency counter at what frequency uh, like uh, the carry frequency at which we are the carry frequency at which we are modulating it right uh, the frequency modulation occurs at what frequency that can be controlled here with the help of the switched frequency counter right uh, this also goes to average frequency counter we do have balance detector here which is a kind of demodulation uh, technique we use here this is low frequency amplifier and av average frequency counter and we get to see the range here that is the distance we are talking about here so uh, let's see one by one what is the role of each block here fmcw radar contains two antennas transmitting antenna and receiving antenna two separate antennas as shown in the figure the transmitting antenna transmits the signal and the receiving antenna right the usual thing block diagram looks similar to the block diagram cw radar the difference is the modulation block right fm modulator it produces frequency modulated signal of variable frequency here frequency is a function of time which is represented here and supplied to the FM transmitter. Uh, it transmits the FM signal with the help of transmitting antenna. The output of the FM transmitter is also connected to mixer 1. Right? In, in general what happens, my local oscillator is used to uh, produce an RF signal which is of frequency FL. Right? But here it is used to produce a signal having intermediate frequency. So, here I must go back and I must write it as FIF, right? In CW radar, it generates FL, but here in case of FMCW radar, it generates, right, IF. And the output of the local oscillator is connected to both mixer 1 and balance detector. So the mixer can produce both sum and difference of the frequency that I applied to it. The signals having frequency of this and this. This is the generated frequency used for transmission. This is the local oscillator frequency here, right? So the mixer 1 will generate either this sum or the difference frequency. This is the sum frequency, that is the difference frequency, right? So mixer 2 now can have, see, the signals having frequency of this and this are applied to mixer 2. This is uh, because of the Doppler shift. So here, because of the Doppler shift, we get F O T minus T. Because the input here was T, right? So here, we do get it as This was a function of time and after some time uh, what we receive, right? So, these frequencies, so here either we get sum of these two frequencies or difference of these two frequencies, right? And usually what we choose is the difference frequency because that has to be uh, down converted to my baseband frequency, my RF frequency to IF frequency then to my baseband frequency. The IF amplifier amplifies the intermediate frequency signal. The IF, uh, it amplifies the signal having frequency of this, 
this amplified signal is applied as in input to the balance detector. Here balance detector acts as a demodulator, right? And we do get the desired frequency. The output of balance detector is applied as an input to the low frequency amplifier. And low frequency amplifier here amplifies the output of my balance detector to the required level and output of the low frequency is applied both to the switch frequency and the average frequency counter which we could see here. It is useful for getting the value of Doppler velocity, switch frequency counter, this is the role of switch frequency counter, right. Now this is what uh, we have studied about continuous wave radar and frequency modulated continuous wave radar. Now let us give a look to the noises in radar. Detection of signals in noise, if I talk about noise, noise is the unwanted electromagnetic interference. Right? Noise is also a signal but in background it acts in a way that uh, uh, it, it somehow hinders my actual ongoing communication. It is usually generated by thermal motion of the conduction electrons. So this is called as Johnson noise and how can we represent it? This noise power can be represented, noise is calculated in terms of the power it generates. So this is KTB, here K is my Boltzmann constant. T is my system temperature and whereas V is my bandwidth in which the noise is present, right? If I talk about SNR, what is signal to noise ratio? We all know we are uh, like uh, studying communication engineering for so far. Signal to noise ratio is the average power of signal to average power of noise. That ratio is called as signal to noise ratio, which is important in any kind of communication. So in radar communication also, SNR, study of SNR is important. So if you want to study uh, noise in a receiver, then we must study the receiver block diagram. This is envelope detector, a basic receiver, right? So here, what we get is applied to IF amplifier, then to detector, and finally, uh, using threshold and video amplifier, we get the detection decision. The basics of uh, all this we have studied in our basic communication classes. So if I talk about what is radar cross section of targets, a radar cross section is defined as the ratio of its effective isotropic scattered power to the incident power density. This is rep represented by this symbol and is mathematically represented by this expression. Here capital R is the distance between radar and the target. ER is the strength of reflected field and radar EI is the strength of the incident field, right? So this is how cross section, why this is important, this we use in case of radar range equations as well. So, so my signal uh, sigma is, uh, this is used in range equations as well. So we need to study it. The radar cross section depends on the characteristic dimensions of object compared to radar wavelength. If I talk about probability of false, false alarm, if there is no target available in the vicinity still because of uh, my threshold is so small or my radar is so sensitive that even because uh, like because of the noise in the background or any other reason, I assume that uh, I, 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 it, it is predicted that some target is available that is called as probability of false alarm. This occurs when there is noise voltage exceeds a defined threshold. Because we keep a threshold, if signal is received that, is, uh, that exceeds the threshold, we assume that target is detected. But if noise is so high at time that it exceeds the th uh, threshold, then it is uh, felt that a target is in nearby vicinity, right? It can be represented by probability formula, right? The average time interval between crossing of the threshold is called as false alarm time represented by this. Here. My TK is the time difference between crossing of the threshold by the noise envelope, right? So it could have also been defined as the ratio of the time that the envelope is about the threshold to total time as shown. Uh, figure I will show next. This is the figure which we are talking about. If this was the threshold and my noise exceeds the threshold, then I assume that a target has been detected, but it is a false alarm, right? 
the false alarm times of practical target must be very large so the probability of false alarm must be very small so this is the remedy for it right so these uh, with these expressions it could be explained well right we are summing all the times at which the al alarm is detected right and finally what we are getting here time uh, this is uh, tfa is my false alarm time and here my beta is the bandwidth right tfa is 1 upon bandwidth and these are these entities could also be used right so if i talk about now system losses what are the various system losses that we observe in case of radar communication uh, there are losses because of environmental noise, attenuation, uh, diffraction, reflection, right? So the most common noise that we uh, uh, that we get in radar communications, microwave, plumbing, losses. These are all, there are always losses in the transmission line that connects the antenna to the transmitter and receiver. In addition, there can also be losses in the various microwave components such as duplexer, receiver protector, rotatory joints, direction couplers, transmission lines, right? Other losses includes my transmission line losses, my duplexer losses, my antenna losses, beam shape loss. Uh, uh, my antenna losses include my beam shape loss, scanning loss, uh, uh, radome this, uh, and phased array losses. Signal processing losses, I have collapsing losses, propagation losses. These losses could be studied in detail. That depends on interest, right? So these are the references which I use. That's it for today. Thank you.